Hello, hello, it's Miss Katie from Heritage Ways, and I'd like to share with you a recipe that my great aunt gave us that Mr. Patient really loves. If you like, well, we call her, called her Auntie. She was my great aunt, Ethel Merwine. Let me back up. I'm Miss Katie, and if you're new to our channel, welcome. We have six children, two are married, we have one granddaughter, and our three youngest children and Mr. Patient and I are currently traveling around the nation in an RV seeking ways to just serve and encourage and meet people, build community, share life, just be a light in a dark world, Lord willing. Well, I am making tomorrow night's supper because we are going to tour around the area where we're staying and we've got to be frugal. My husband has quit his job and we are um, have a little bit of income from here and there, but not at all what we used to have at all. So we are trusting the Lord in his provision. I pulled out one of my cookbooks this morning, one of my tried and true, where I've kept a lot of handwritten cook, uh, recipes. And I found this recipe from Christmas 1989. Mr. Patient, my husband, loves this. It's Polynesian meatballs from Auntie. I made the meatballs that Christmas, and my husband loved them. By the way, if you hear the clink, clink, clink <laughs> in the background of the video, it's because Little Music Man likes to decorate the place, and he has taken a pizza pan and put a, put it on a string and hung it outside the camper for a doorbell. So that's what you're hearing in the background. Well, let me give you the recipe. I've already started this mixture. It is two pounds of ground beef. Now this is from my CSA, my, my fellow that I would buy from before we left Middle Tennessee and I, I bought a lot and put it in the freezer. So I have two pounds of ground beef. I have one egg that I've already put in my bowl here with a cup and a half of rice, and it is already cooked. It calls for one small onion chopped, but I don't have, actually I do have one onion, but I wanted to save it for something else, so I used about a teaspoon or so. I don't measure things. I used about a teaspoon. It also calls for a teaspoon of baking powder, so I've put that in there. It calls for a half a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of pepper. One small jar of pimento pieces. You know, pimentos like you put in pimento cheese. Well, I don't have that, and since pimentos are red peppers, I did have these dried red peppers from our farm that I dehydrated um, last summer. The kids chopped them up and we dehydrated them. So I've got those, and I just put, I don't know, a couple tablespoons um, measured with the palm of my hand and I put that in there so this is what I have I have everything except the meat in here and I'm going to add the meat and I'm going to mix that up with my hands and then I'm going to form them into meatballs I'm going to saute them you can bake them in the oven to cook them and then we will come back and I will tell you about the sauce that um, the meatballs are served in I'll also write the recipe in the comment section down below so you all can copy and paste it, or you can have it to refer to. I used leftover rice in this recipe, which is what prompted me to actually make the recipe anyway, because I had most of all the ingredients. The only thing I didn't have, like I've already mentioned, is the, the pimentos, but I used the dried red peppers, and um, they are going to rehydrate. I'm not worried about that. I might even make these meatballs up and then not cook them right away. And then just kind of, um, that will also allow me to make this meal in several steps, but also allow the peppers to rehydrate a little bit. Now, Auntie, I, her name was Ethel Marwine. She was never married. She was my great aunt, but she was just beloved by all, by all of her nieces and nephews, her great nieces and nephews, and then her great great, which would be my children. My older children knew her, or at least Trevor did. She was a hard working lady. Never married. Homesteader through and through. 
She was a school teacher. Her career was as a school teacher. And that kept her very busy. Her students loved her. She took care of her mother and father till their deaths. And I have great memories of her. Sometimes when you put rice in, in um, meatballs, some people call them porcupine meatballs. But like I said, these are Polynesian mainly because of the sauce that we're going to serve with them. Y'all, I'm going to write the recipe down below so you can copy and paste it. But I'll just walk you through just a couple of things that I did, maybe a couple of changes. I did bake the meatballs in the oven according to the recipe, and now I'm making the sauce. I put the liquid, which is the um, pineapple juice and some water, in the pan along with the chopped green pepper and the brown sugar and the soy sauce. I actually didn't use soy sauce. I actually used Bragg's Liquid Aminos. Um, we like it, and it's a healthier option uh, to the soy sauce, so we like that. Then I added the crushed pineapple. It actually calls for the um, pineapple chunks, but I used the crushed pineapple. So I mixed all that together, and instead of using the cornstarch as a thickener, I used arrowroot. So that is a powder, similar looking to cornstarch, and I mixed it with a small amount of water, and I put it in at the end. Uh, that doesn't need to be cooked down a whole lot because it will break down, so you just put it in at the end after you've mixed it with some cold water. So I just simmered this until it was thick and poured it over the meatballs. I do think that the pineapple chunks or tidbits would probably be better, but this is what I had. I did put it all in my cast iron pan and popped it in the oven for just a few minutes and then served it with green beans that I had canned from our garden a year or two ago. I hope you enjoy this recipe that may be a little different from your usual meatball recipe. Thanks for cooking with me today, friends, and have a great day. See you next time.